So I'm here with Gerald, K5SDR. Gerald, I'm, you know, arguably you're called the father of software-defined radio. You've lived the technology more than anybody. Here we are with Aurora, polar modulation. What are your first thoughts now? We talked about this earlier, and you came up with a really cool description of where we are today. Well, one of the fun things about being in ham radio is that you can uh, have ideas and bring them to fruition and put them on the air. That's one of the things right. that I've loved about ham radio. And over the 23 years, I guess, that yeah, about Plex that. Radio's been around, we've been able to basically revolutionize the industry for ham radio by bringing software-defined radios onto the market and extend, extending that capability over time. And what we've done now with this technology, the Aurora technology, is to bring that same software-defined capability to transmitters, which has really not been done in the ham radio market ever. Yes, you're correct. We brought digital signal processing to the transmitter because up until right. yesterday, right. every transmitter out there was analog other than the protection circuitry. That's right. And this, for the first time, makes the transmitter all digital. Right. Every, there's not an analog circuit in the transmitter. So what we're able to do is to get extremely high efficiency uh, out of the transmitter, 80 to 90 percent efficiency out of the transmitter by going all digital. That means that the power amplifier is switching like a power supply. Right. right. And we're able to use signal processing technology to make that very linear. In fact, uh, it can be as linear or better than a linear amplifier. Perfect. Yeah, it's 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 a new day. Yeah, new day. We're excited. One of the things that's really fun at Flex Radio, we inter our internal mantra is grab an oar, row as one, and lead the way. This is leading the way again. We led the way in SDRs 23 years ago, and now we're getting to do it in the transmitter field. Why does that matter? Size, weight, and power matters. Here we have a 500-watt transceiver with uh, all in one box at 17 pounds. That just wasn't power possible before. That looks like it can run truly 100%. It, we're running brick on key all day. Yeah. Eight hours, nine hours yesterday we ran it brick I, on key. I can see our AM operators that like to yeah. key down. They're going to yeah. have a blast. Yeah, I think uh, FDA uh, heats up the transceivers, these analog transceivers. This thing runs cool as a cum. RTTY? Uh, RTTY, exactly. AM. People that like to make long transmissions on AM, it, it keeps it cool. Cool. Gerald, thanks for your time. Thanks for your contributions to the hobby. They've been many. Okay. Well, I also want to give a shout out to Tony Brock Fisher, who's, this was his dream, and we've been partners with him for six years. Right. So I'm here with Tony Brock Fisher. Uh, Tony was our chief designer in the Aurora Project here at Flex Radio. Uh, it's Sunday morning. It's almost lunchtime. we got a couple hours left in Hamvention. And I asked Tony, it's... 36, 72 hours because it's been we've been nonstop. What since mm -hmm. Tuesday or Wednesday, so, Tony? How's it been? Uh, yeah. It's just been amazing. It's just a, a total whirlwind. Um, it's just terrific to see the reception that the uh, Aurora project has gotten. Uh, it seems to be really uh, blowing a lot of people's minds. Uh, I hear a lot of words like amazing, game changing. Uh, it's a whole new paradigm. Uh, so it's it's really a, a welcome feeling to see the effect that uh, this long project is is uh, having on the ham ham market. We should be in case you're seeing this video for the first time. We didn't really introduce Aurora. Uh, in in 20 seconds, Aurora is a 500 watt HF radio in a complete box. It looks like this. It weighs 17 pounds. You plug it in the wall. You're ready to go. No need to go buy a power supply and everything just to bring everybody else up to speed. Uh, do you have any one moment where a specific comment came out that sort of surprised you? I've got a few, but... Uh... Uh, I don't know. They just all kind of blend together. Uh, uh, I was I was really uh, honored to be interviewed and by the uh, guys from the RSGB. Uh, they seem to be recognizing this as kind of a, a, a groundswell, game-changing moment in the industry, uh, which is really what I had envisioned. Uh, and... Uh, so it's been it's been great to see the the reception there. Uh, would you use the word disruptive? Definitely, I would definitely use the word disruptive. Uh, uh, this is going to really change a lot of minds and open a lot of eyes as to what's possible. 
Gerald Youngblood mentioned uh, in an, earlier in another interview that forever the transmitter has been an analog device. Those days are over. That's right. That's right. The uh, the drive signals to the amplifier are, are uh, digital signals. Uh, so this is really more of a digital device than, a, than an analog device at this point. Well, it's been quite a journey. The next year, six months to year, is going to be very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's been 12 years in development. Uh, the first six years, I worked with a friend of mine on, on the project. And uh, then uh, in 2019, I brought it to Dayton as a works in progress. Uh, I called it the Polar Explorer. And uh, at that point, I got in touch with Flex Radio, and they were really impressed with the idea. And the, the great thing about Flex Radio is that they recognized that it was disruptive technology, and, and they took the risk to uh, invest in developing the product and bringing it to market. So kudos to Flex for uh, taking the risk and being on the bleeding edge. We're almost done, but I think the risk we took was putting a brick on a key for <laughs> on Friday for because it never run that long. That's right. That's yeah. right. We tested it for a couple of hours. Uh, now, just to be clear, uh, we, we specify the radio as ICAS 50% duty cycle. And in testing, people have used it on FT8 for hours at a time, and it runs cool as a cucumber. But just to show, uh, really highlight the benefits of efficiency, we run it brick on key here, 500 watts, and we've run it all day long, two days in a row. And the radio itself does, hasn't gone over 40 degrees C. Uh, but the, the dummy load is too hot to touch. Uh, right. So it's In fact, we have to shut it down early so we can pack up the let it cool right. down. That's right. <laughs> you can't put, the, can't put the blanket over the dummy load for fear it'll catch fire. <laughs> well, Tony, thanks for your time. Thank you for your contributions to the hobby. I think many will really appreciate it in the coming years. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Thanks.